So, about four years ago, well, first let me start. I'm, my name is Shannon Sullivan, and I'm a licensed massage therapist. I've been practicing massage therapy, Reiki, and cranial sacral for 12 years. And my original practice was in Green Valley. About four years ago, it was a beautiful spring day, and I woke up bright and early, 5 o'clock, to get ready for my day. And how I start my day is look outside and realize that I love the sun and the beautiful blue sky. And I realized that it was a springtime, and so the sun was beginning to rise sooner and sooner. And the first thing I did was look at my calendar. And now it's on my phone, but at that time it was on paper. And so I went to the calendar and I realized that my first client of the day was Wes, Wes Harmon. And at this time he was 94 years old and I would meet with him three times a week. Two times a week we would do exercise. And the third day we would do uh, massage therapy. So on this day I was a little bit worried because for the last six months, sometimes he would come, sometimes he would forget it, um, sometimes he would come late, and I began to worry that his memory was slipping. He had begun to lock his keys in his car, and I would often call his son and let him know what was happening. So that was on my mind when I was getting ready, and my thought was just praying that he would make it that day. And he would often tell me, well, if I don't show up, then, you know, I went home. And I said, okay. And when he did show up, he'd say, I'm still alive. <laughs> and then we'd celebrate by working out. <laughs> so I began, uh, I, I got ready for the day, packed my car with my equipment, lotion, sheets, exercise equipment, and then I drove down to Green Valley, so it was about a 45 minute ride. And when I got to the parking lot at the clinic that I was working at, which was a physical therapy clinic, I unpacked my car and started to tow it in. And to get to the clinic, you have to walk through the courtyard. And the courtyard had beautiful trees that were established. Eucalyptus trees, which are 30 feet tall, Palo Verde trees, mesquite trees. And in the trees, the owners of the plaza would hang uh, uh, hummingbird feeders. And because in that area, especially all of Arizona, but especially in that area close to Madera Canyon, you had a lot of hummingbirds that would come through at that time for migration. And so it would attract tons of different types of hummingbirds. So I'd love to watch them. And as you can see on my leg, I have a hummingbird tattoo. That's in honor of my grandmother who's deceased. And she was like a little hummingbird, so they're always an inspiration for me. And when I see them, I'm reminded of her. And so that day I saw tons of them zipping in and fighting over the, the food and the feeder. And, and I would say hello and they'd zip by my head. And and cover, and I hope that I buzz. And then I walked into the clinic, and the clinic was awesome in that it was a big, open, wide space, and then we had our individual rooms that we treat uh, patients and clients in. The windows overlooked outside, and they ran from the ceiling all the way to the floor. So I had to look out at the courtyard at any time while I was working with clients that were out in the exercise area and or in between clients, massage clients. And so I was to check and see what hummingbirds were visiting. So this morning I put away my stuff and got the table ready for my upcoming clients and then got all the equipment ready, still thinking, I hope Wes shows up. Still praying that he would be okay and if he wasn't that he would be okay anyway. And as I got ready, I turned and looked, and uh, 
noticed that there were a couple hummingbirds fighting over one in the theater and one with the ruby neck one this time. And then I uh, turned away and, and kneeled and um, was getting one of the rubber bands ready for the exercise and all of a sudden I heard and my heart sunk in my chest. And Maria, who was a personal trainer there, I turned and she was closest to the window and I said, was it one of the hummingbirds? And she said yes. And my heart um, was beating really hard in my chest. And I thought, well, I don't really have my brain. I don't really have time for this. You know, I have to get ready for my clients. And I said, well, that's not okay. <laughs> so I put my brain aside, and my compassion aside came out and said, there is no way I'm going to have somebody step on that hummingbird. That would be worse than anything in the whole world. So I walked to the door, and I slowly opened the door, turned the corner, and there was a little hummingbird laying there. So I looked up to him. I picked his little bit of body up, put it in my hand, and I looked at him, and there was no movement, and his eyes were closed, and he just lay there. My thought was, as a, as a Reiki master, working with energy work, I know that no matter what happens, whether somebody's living or in between or going to pass it. It's always nice to have somebody there with you. And so I, I looked at him and the brain part of me said, well, just put him on the ground and move him away from where he might step and be stepped on and continue getting ready for your day. And the other part said, well, that's not okay. And so I looked at him and I sat down underneath a tree and I held him and I said, well, I'll stay with you until you tell me whether you want to stay or go. And at that point, he still was doing nothing. And I couldn't tell. There was no movement. And so I slowly covered the top of him with my right hand and formed a little cave. And just sat and kept telling him, I love you. I'll stay here as long as you need me to. I love you. And I sat there for about three minutes and then decided to lift up my hand and, and to see how he was doing. Lifted up my hand and he still lay there. And I covered him again after touching him and trying to feel what his feathers felt like underneath my fingers. I said, well, do you want me to stay with you? And I just felt like, yeah, I'm still supposed to stay. There's still no sign of Wes. And all I could do was just sit with him. So I covered him again with my hand, closed my eyes, and said, I love you, and I'll stay here with you. And then I lifted my hand again just to see. Well, I didn't even feel that. He's like sitting up now. And I said, you are sitting up. And he's blinking his one eye very slowly. But he was sitting down and he was just not moving very much, but he was sitting up. And I didn't even feel the difference in my hand. And so I said, wow, this must be working. <laughs> So I covered him again with my hand, held it for about a minute, just holding him, and I lifted my hand one more time. This time he was standing up on my hand, like, oh, oh. And then at that point, he started to move his feathers and kind of test things out, and I don't know what happened to her, but <laughs> this is much better than that. <laughs> He was wiggling his feathers, and then all of a sudden, one jumped off my hand, two, and then on the third time, he was off my face. 